Well now, let's talk about those mobile fortresses on the seas that form the backbone of the world's blue water fleets. These bad boys pack a serious strategic punch, second only to nuclear-powered aircraft carriers. With their firepower, they can take out just about any target in their sights, from fighter jets to submarines. That's right, we are talking about guided missile destroyer classes. But in modern naval warfare, do larger ships with more weapons always prevail? Fasten your seat belts and witness with military knowledge. Five destroyer models carrying the most powerful attack missiles in the world. Strap in, because we're about to dive into the five most powerful guided missile destroyers on the planet. Back in the day, destroyers were all about speed, endurance, and escorting the big boys like aircraft carriers and transport ships, protecting them from air, missile, and submarine threats. But these days, navies aren't just tricking out their destroyers with the latest combat tech to maximize their existing firepower. They're also arming them with long-range surface-to-air missiles, turning them into real multi-role heavyweights ready to throw down solo whenever needed. The strange-looking ship in front of you is considered the most advanced destroyer in the world today. It's called the Zumwalt, named after the former US Navy Admiral Elmo Zumwalt Jr., a man with some history in Vietnam. Now, even though it's called a destroyer, this 186-meter, 16,000-ton behemoth is actually heavier than a Russian Slava-class cruiser plus two of the Gepard-class frigates operated by the Vietnamese Navy. And the Zumwalt's arsenal is no joke, especially its vertical launch system with 80 missile cells that can unleash all kinds of firepower, from those deadly Tomahawk cruise missiles that can hit targets over 1-300 kilometers away with pinpoint precision turning the ship into a mobile firebase ready to strike first in any conflict. But when it comes to escorting a fleet, this US Navy destroyer can't ignore the threat of those advanced anti-ship missiles like the British Sea Eagle, the French Exocet, or India's fearsome Brahmos that could come raining down from enemy fighter jets. And even trying to take down the Zumwalt with submarines comes with big risks. That stealthy design and high automation lets it detect and blast those underwater ghosts first with its RUM-139 anti-sub missiles that have proven their worth in exercises. Plus, while it's not a helicopter destroyer, the sheer size of this beast means the US engineers gave it a helipad too, so you can load it up with a couple of those killer SH-60 or MH-60R anti-sub choppers to really ramp up the sub-hunting capabilities. At first blush, it'd be a dream come true for a navy with a tight budget to suddenly get handed a Zumwalt. But realistically, even if that far-fetched scenario happened, the ship would probably just get sold off to a richer country to be reverse-engineered or chopped up. The problem is, all those advanced systems and weapons are just so darn complex that they make repairs and maintenance a nightmare, driving the annual operating costs up to the hundreds of millions enough to eat up a big chunk of an average country's defence budget with questionable real-world value. Heck, just firing off one of those fancy new guided missiles from the Zumwalt costs the US military around $800,000 a pop. Back in 2018, the US Navy even toyed with the idea of turning the Zumwalts into nuclear-powered ships, but after some disappointing test results, they're now considering repurposing them as specialized submarine hunters or nuclear attack ships instead. But for now, the US seems to still be relying on those trusty Arleigh Burke class destroyers, with the latest Flight 3 variant considered the most potent destroyer around at the moment, ranking right up there with the world's best. You know, back in the 90s, when the Soviet Union was crumbling and China's military wasn't quite a peer yet, the US found itself as the sole superpower. But that may have led their defense industry down the wrong path, churning out outrageously expensive equipment 
that's more about flashiness than actual combat effectiveness. Stuff really only useful for bullying smaller Middle Eastern nations, not facing off against real rivals. But those Ali Burke-class destroyers are a different story. Even though they've been in service since 1991, this class of warship is still considered the heavy hitter of the world's mightiest naval force. In fact, their mere presence in hotspots around the globe is said to provide a much more effective deterrent than even the high-tech Zumwalt. Especially the latest Flight 3 variant, which packs a 9,600-ton displacement, over 1,000 tons more than the original Flight Y. Washington considers it without peer against any other surface combatant out there, and that's no exaggeration. On this latest Arleigh Burke, the US has equipped it with the advanced Aegis radar system, the AIN SPY-6, which blows away the performance of the older AIN SPY-1 on the original ships. Through air defense drills, this radar has proven its chops not just in electronic warfare, but also in directing those RIM-162 and RIM-161 anti-ballistic missiles to shoot down incoming threats with pinpoint precision. And that's not all. This ship also carries the Phalanx Close-In Weapon System, twin MK-38 machine guns, a MK-53 decoy launcher, and AN-SLQ-25 Nixie countermeasures. So anyone trying to pull a sneaky surprise attack on one of these fortresses is in for a world of hurt. Incoming missiles can be intercepted or diverted off-target, and the crew aboard these mobile citadels don't have to worry too much, even if the fleet gets swarmed by enemy missiles, aircraft or submarines. That 96-cell vertical launch system gives them more than enough firepower to lay the smack down. Plus, they can even lob Tomahawk cruise missiles to hit ground targets. Trying to actually damage one of these ships is incredibly difficult, and the attacker is sure to take heavy losses. Even if they somehow manage to strike an Ali Burke Thur first, they'd better not start celebrating until they see the thing actually sink. These things are wrapped in over 130 tons of Kevlar armor protecting the vital areas. So unless the hit is powerful enough, the ship can just keep fighting or limp back to base at up to 34 knots. It even has room for a couple of those MH-60R helos to bolster its anti-sub capabilities. Clearly, the Ali Burke III is a true ace in the hole for US fleets going forward. But lately, things aren't looking quite so easy, especially across the Pacific, as China's navy keeps getting stronger and stronger. Not only have they surpassed the US in overall fleet size, but they've also got some seriously powerful surface combatants that can match up pretty evenly with America's best. Looks like you're watching an impressive missile launch from one of China's homegrown Type 055 destroyers. That's the third ship we're featuring in our video today. While it's smaller than the US Zumwalt, at 180 meters long and 20 meters wide, with a 12,000 ton full load displacement, the Type 055 is still pretty darn huge for a destroyer. In fact, it's even bigger than the US Navy's own Ticonderoga-class cruisers which only have a 9,800 ton displacement. This is the most powerful destroyer ever built in China to date. And the weapons systems packed onto the Type 055 are some of the world's best, with 112 vertical launch cells that give it the firepower to handle independent combat operations if needed, not just escort duties. We're talking the HHQ-9 long-range anti-air missiles that can engage enemy aircraft and cruise missiles out to 120 kilokilons at altitudes up to 50 kilometers. Plus, in any big naval battles, those fearsome YJ-18 anti-ship missiles with their Mach 3.5 speed and 120 kilometers range would give the Chinese Navy a serious advantage over Western Harpoon missiles. However, the passive guidance on those YJ-18s is said to be a bit lacking in precision so engaging high-speed targets could be tricky. But as a well-rounded multi-role ship like the US Arleigh Burke class, the Type 055 can also strike land targets with its CJ-10 cruise missiles. While the ds Mac guidance isn't as sophisticated as the latest Tomahawk Block AVs with a 500 kilos warhead and over 1,500 kilometers range, it's still packing a serious punch.
And on top of all those missiles, there's also a 130mm main gun and some 30mm close-in weapons, not as automated as the American phalanx, but more than enough to handle low-flying threats. Now, the anti-submarine capabilities on this ship are a bit lacking, so those CT-5 anti-sub missiles might not reach their full potential. That could be a real Achilles heel that an enemy could exploit if they really want to send this Type 055 to the bottom. But with all that incredible firepower and radar that's basically on par with the Aegis system on the Ali Burks, the Type 055 is still going to be a huge threat to countries in Southeast Asia and India as China expands its naval influence in the South China Sea and Indian Ocean. Though maybe not so much for a couple close US allies right on China's northeastern doorstep, they've got some pretty impressive warships of their own. Take South Korea's Sejong the Great Destroyer. That's the fourth ship we're highlighting today. The Koreans consider this their steely-fisted weapon of modern naval warfare. Look at that. The Sejong looks a lot like those Ali Burks and Japanese Otago-class ships. And that's because it's basically a latecomer that borrowed a ton of features from those two predecessors, sharing a lot of common systems and components. But hey, just because it's a little smaller at 165 meters long and 10,600 tons full load, doesn't mean it's weak source compared to the Type 055. In fact, that 128-cell vertical launch system gives the Sejong more firepower to engage multiple targets than the Chinese ship. Plus, those SSM-700K Sea Star anti-ship missiles may not be as crazy fast as the YJ-18, but their 180km plus range and GPS, active radar terminal guidance, make them pretty darn accurate. And as one of America's closest allies, the South Koreans had no trouble integrating all the latest electronic wizardry on the Sejong. Stuff like that SQL-200K electronic warfare suite and AN-SPG-62 fire control radar that rivals what you'd find on a standard US Navy warship. Attacking the Sejong the Great with submarines would be a lot tougher than going after the Type 055 thanks to that SQL-200K hull-mounted sonar system and DSQS-21 BZIR-M towed array. Plus, it can detect subs and fire those k Azrock anti-sub missiles at them. But the real standout capability is those Hyonmu cruise missiles that can hit targets over 500 kilometers away, real handy for striking enemy missile launchers or other key sites. And with a 10,190 kilometer range, the Sejong's reach is a bit longer than the Type 055's 9,260 kilometers. The downside is, the Sejong's air defenses aren't quite as impressive it mostly relies on those short-range RIM-66 standard missiles with just a 25 km max range, plus the Goalkeeper 75 gun system. That could be a problem if it's up against a strong air force using standoff missiles and smart bombs. But if you're still skeptical about the Sejong's chops after those failed North Korean missile tests in 2019, or if you worry that Steel Fist moniker is just hype, you could always go with the fifth ship on our list Japan's Otago-class destroyer. Quite similar in size and shape to the Sejong, the Otago has been one of the Japanese self-defense force's top aces at sea since 2008. It's a little more modestly armed than the Sejong, with just a 127mm main gun and 95 vertical launch cells. But it makes up for that with a cutting-edge AN-SPQ-9C radar that can cue those SM-3 Block II AA anti-ballistic missiles to shoot down incoming threats at over 1,000 kilometers and Mach 8.8 .8 speeds. Combined with the medium-range SM-2 missiles and phalanx Cywis, that gives the Otago some serious layered air defenses. And in ship-to-ship -ship battles, those Mitsubishi H-90 anti-ship missiles could give the Otago the edge to strike first against rivals like the Type 055. Sure, they're slower at just Mark III, so easier to intercept than China's YJ-18. But the Otago can also go after land targets with Tomahawks and hunt subs with Azrock. Unfortunately, we couldn't fit the Royal Navy's Daring class, the French-Italian Horizon class, or India's Kolkata-class destroyers into this video. Those ships may be a bit smaller than the big boys we covered, but they each have their own unique strengths, especially for fleet defence duties.
If you're interested, let us know in the comments and we might feature them in a future video.